It is Wednesday, my dudes, and that means that we are once again back in this video game, building the Losty Lake. And we're going to address, kind of, we've made good progress with the park. We've got the entrance building, we have got the park itself, and, you know, most of the scenery around the bits of the park we've built. But there is one glaring hole here, in that the entrance building just sort of connects to this random cave where the queue just comes out of nowhere. So I thought today we should probably work on the actual infrastructure for the front of the park, namely the car park, road network, and kind of building up from there. So this was another case of the whole process, <laughs> the whole process of me constructing the car park and roadway and entrance booths, like where you, you drive up and get a ticket for the car park booth sort of thing. I have no idea what they're actually called. The toll gate sort of structure. I hope that's descriptive enough. Um, and it ended up being that the footage was very, very long, like 35 minutes, I think. And I feel like car parks and roads, or parking lots for you, uh, my my friends across the pond, uh, it, it's not the most enthralling thing to watch. Uh, half an hour off, so I'm going to split the episode up again. So in this episode, we're going to focus on the actual main car park itself, as well as kind of put some rough road down like it's not gonna be the final road layout but it's it's kind of very close to what the road eventually becomes and in fact recently i haven't um i haven't even done made, done it yet i haven't finished it yet at the moment the road system that is currently built for me is what you're seeing being built but i'm thinking about just upending the entire thing and just laying it all back down again in like a different layout because you know the car park is very close to the actual theme park itself. I guess the car park itself, the proximity of that is fine. Um, but the actual kind of roads that lead up to the car park and the toll booth and all that, very it, it feels very, very claustrophobic. And that's because I built the entrance building a little bit too close to the edge of the map. That's why you saw at the beginning of this video, I not only increased the map size in the scenario editor kind of edit sex screen, uh, but I also flattened a bunch of the terrain out just to kind of create enough space for the car park. So I ended up having kind of a, a bit of this awkward sheer drop from the edge of the map because, you know, you can't have a flat edge to the map. So I had to kind of try and create the hills so they look like they rolled down naturally, but also a fairly steep level so we could get as much flat real estate as we possibly could. So that's going to be the uh, the struggle, the challenge of uh, this series. Now, I am committed to not using any Theme Maker's Toolkit or indeed, you know, Steam Workshop items. So we're going to have to build the parking spaces from scratch. So I'm using the... I used the cars from the Action... The Studios Pack, I believe it's called. The studio, It's called the Studios Pack, yeah. <laughs> the cars from the Studios Pack to kind of make sure these spaces were a realistic size. And then that, that was it. We're going to now just lay them out in this car park. Now, I feel like the shape of the car park, you know, some people... In Planet Coast to make these really heavily themed and really, really well thought out car parks. And me, I feel like most theme parks, like you look at things like, I don't know, see what I, I, I actually looked at a lot of reference images for this, like mainly just going Google, Google Maps, satellite view, having a look at what actual theme park parking lots, car parks look like. And most of them, it is just a massive area of land with parking spaces on it and there's nothing else. It's very popular in Planet Coast to make these really like nice looking parking areas and really intricately well thought out paths. In reality, it's often just a giant area of tarmac and people would say, good luck, go and park. I guess you do have attendance guiding people into the right place, but it is still very much a giant open area of parking. And Velocity Lake... Is more of a, I wouldn't really call Velocity Lake a theme park. It's more of an amusement park. It's not particularly heavily themed. And so the car park might look a bit juxtaposed if, you know, the car park was wonderfully intricately decorated and laid out. And then the park itself is fairly generic. So it's a fairly generic car park, but I feel like it is still a realistic kind of design for it, if that makes sense. That's the introduction to this episode. <laughs> uh, I hope you guys are looking forward to it. So there were a few challenges to the construction of the... I keep I keep thinking of saying parking lot to kind of accommodate my American viewers who make up the, bulk, the vast majority of my audience, but also my British tongue is car park. But then I, I guess I would naturally say car park because I keep thinking of parking lot, I end up just saying. So I might change between the two. That's an internal struggle, yes, because as, <laughs> as I was saying, this was kind of challenging in the sense that... It, I, I it's, Planet Coaster is not really designed for roads, funnily enough. It barely functions as a path building tool. So trying to build roads in this game and sort of realistic looking 
road markings and just general road infrastructure is quite challenging. So I'm using the art shapes here and you can see I've actually used the uh, terrain paint tool. If you're in a scenario, if you're like building something in scenario editor, if you quit, you can't do it like in game. You have to go to the main menu of the game. It's like, you know, when you want to change the graphic settings of a, a game. Sometimes you need to go to the main menu rather than just using the pause menu. This is an example of that. So you have to go to the main menu of Planet Coaster. And then when you go to the scenario bit and open scenarios, you can change the uh, terrain paint in a in the scenario. So I replaced one of the ones I hadn't yet used and replaced it with the uh, tarmac texture. I don't think it was part of any DLC. I believe the Ghostbusters pack might have added a new kind of tarmac. I don't know if that just came with the update that included Ghostbusters. I don't really know. I just saw it in a video today by Masked Bandit. So now I'm using that as canon. Love that guy, by the way. Much better at Planet Coaster than me. Guys, subscribe to Masked Bandit. He recently just hit 10,000 subscribers. I mean, this is like recently for me. So probably he's nearly at 20,000 by the time this video actually ends up coming out. Uh, but yeah, there was that, so that was a challenge. I feel like the most challenging part of this build, though, is not anything to do with the construction of it, but just trying to come up with... 35 minutes of commentary about how I built a car park. So wish me luck, guys. I'm not even entirely convinced I can do entertaining commentary at all. So it's going to be extra fun trying to come up with kind of, I don't know, consistently engaging talking points or carry us <laughs> through the rest of the build. One thing I'm doing here actually is I'm taking the cars that I placed and splitting them from the building. So the car park like lines are part of one building and then the cars are going to be part of another building just so it's going to be very easy to quickly select uh, all the parking spaces at once and then all the cars at once without kind of conflicting with each other. Uh, just because I don't want to have to place the cars for every single parking space because it's going to take ages. So it's going to make it far easier for duplicating large areas of car <laughs> and uh, copying them over to the other parts of the parking lot without having to uh, delete or deselect the lines as well if that makes sense in terms of a car park layout i think this is pretty good you know it's kind of got this triangle shape to it just because it follows the path of the river that feeds into velocity lake uh, so I think this was a good compromise. It leaves us with this nice thin strip. I believe I've mentioned this in previous episodes and now you can see it. There's kind of a thin strip between the car park and the river itself, which will uh, be a perfect place to put a coaster, which is now, I don't think I've mentioned it in previous episodes what the coaster is because I'm pretty sure I haven't recorded a commentary in the time it took me to uh, do the last commentary and then subsequently build this coaster <laughs> so it's a uh, it's a zadra inspired uh, rmc build uh, rocky mountain construction uh basically for those that aren't super nerdy into roller coaster types it's the uh, hybrid wooden steel coaster type in planet coaster same as steel vengeance at cedar point you know that kind of coaster it's like that but zadra is uh, special because it's actually a ground up uh, ibox coaster which at the moment is the i, th I don't th i think most rmc's are not ground up coasters they're built uh on the footprint blueprint of previous coasters like i think at the moment they're building guazi granted when you look at the construction photos for the guazi rmc they've torn down pretty much all of the coaster so it does vary how much of the original they use i believe they're using a lot of the original uh like foundation foot pieces i guess to be fair i don't really know i haven't been following the build that closely but zadra is a completely kind of new uh, rmc it's not based on anything previous so that's kind of cool and that's what mine is and i think it's it's very big <laughs> so it, it, at the moment i believe it's the biggest ride in the park at least by altitude that was kind of a weird way to say height. At least by height, it's the biggest. I don't know if track length, the BNM sit down may just edge it out in terms of length of track, but honestly, I wouldn't want to. I wouldn't want to make that call. If I want to, if I was going to bet, I'd probably say the RMC is a little bit longer than the BNM sit down, but there's probably not a lot in it. So well done. Didn't talk about anything that was just going on there. I, I've placed it down. I placed. I've placed down a fence. I'm very tired. I, I say this a lot. I'm very tired, guys, just as an excuse for my pathetic commentary. But, you know, I usually have to uh, do my commentaries and editing and all that after I get back from work, where I'm normally very drained from uh, drained of energy anyway. And right now in the UK, it's quite warm. Uh, cue people from hotter countries telling me it's not very warm. We're just not used to the heat that you guys are. And we don't have any air conditioning in any of our buildings, so it's always very warm. And I'm sitting in an office that's very small. My office is 
my office is very small and it doesn't have any air conditioning or windows actually i tell a lie it does have a window but the window looks uh west so the sun is currently shining through so i've had to have the curtain closed the whole room is covered in foam to uh improve the sound of my voice hopefully so what 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 I'm trying to say is that my office is very warm. You know, my computer is very big. It's basically like an Arga in terms of making sure the room stays heated and, you know, there's not very much ventilation. I do find it... <laughs> I'm very good at finding ways of dragging out uh, very basic talking points, but I guess that does come back to the issue. I've got to try and find <laughs> half an hour's worth of commentary for building a car park. That being said, I don't think we've got that much time left in this particular episode Maybe I'll pause it to go and, glab, go, go, go and grab another glass of water, which I'm currently sipping on every now and then, just to keep my voice nice and, I don't know, moist. <laughs> moist. Okay, I'm drinking water to keep my voice moist. There's a brand new sentence, if there ever was one. Here you can see me placing some arrows. I've kind of come up with this one-way system to stop kind of car crunches. If this were like the the uh, the parking lot in like a supermarket or other big department store, it probably wouldn't work very well because people might think, "Oh, I'll go down this channel." <clears throat> oh, throat throat closed up for a second. I'll go down this channel, then realize there's no parking spaces, and then it's a really big hassle having to go right the way back around because it's all a one big one way system. However, it's very common in a theme park car parks to have like multiple attendants telling you where exactly you need to park so i didn't think it was too much of an issue here. so the one-way system is basically there just for helping cars get out of the car park rather than into the car park to find a space so i was really focusing my efforts on uh you know getting a good escape plan laid out for drivers showing them exactly how to exit the park without clashing into anything rather than necessarily focusing on how good how easy it is to find empty spaces because hopefully there'll be attendants en masse telling cars exactly where they need to go in order to get a space so i should probably go back and add some a bit, a bit more signage to the park like add some actual dedicated zones like a1 a2 etc that sort of thing uh, just kind of help facilitate attendance guiding cars to uh, specific spots. But I think as a skeletal framework, this is fine. So, yep, just lots of uh, one-way arrows indicating cars to have, like, directing cars to the exit roadway, which will be here, I suppose, on the other side of this fence. Not fence, like bush, hedge, planter. I believe it's the planter from the vintage pack. Yeah. There we go. That's uh, well. That's the that's the car park. So I hope you like the actual shape of the car park. We'll do a little bit of it. I think next episode will be a good time to include the actual expansion. Now we've got kind of most of the final design here. We're going to just kind of be doing a bit of kind of placeholder roading, like <laughs> roading. That's not a real word, is it? We're going to be kind of starting out the road that leads to the theme park, and we'll keep most of it. But I think the actual the plan I had was having a roundabout, kind of you know a big roundabout. One exit is the entrance to the car park. One exit is like the exit to the car park. I don't really know how to, my words. My words they make no sense. <laughs> uh, yeah. I'm planning, this is actually one thing I mentioned earlier. You know, when I said um, I was a bit dissatisfied with how claustrophobic the car park was. This is why. See these kind of thicker lines here? That's I'm basically at this point marking out the layout for the toll booth section. The toll booths will be built next episode, but we're going to start planning them out here. And as you can see, they're in very, very, very close proximity the, to the park itself. Most real parks, the toll booths for the entrance to the car park, whilst not true for every park, most have a toll booth that's a little bit further away from the rest of the car park. So what I'm thinking, and I haven't done this yet, but what I think I might go and do maybe this weekend, you know, it's a Thursday for me, so Friday is right around the corner, maybe this weekend if the weather sucks, because, you know, I said earlier, the UK's been getting a lot of hot weather, we are due a massive thunderstorm soon, so maybe if I get rained off, I'll uh, take some time to uh, reassess the road situation, maybe I'll decide I actually like it, but I think I may, I may keep the same road system, but just try and get that toll booth a little bit further away from the actual park itself, not only because it's a bit close at the moment, but also, in a couple of episodes time we'll be building the monorail system and the monorail system does kind of cr <laughs> cram things together even closer so whilst i kind of like the claustrophobic look 
it doesn't really look that realistic and it does kind of close off any option for expansion later down the line. So I'll probably go back and remodel the whole thing. But as an initial design, I think it looks okay. So uh, that's what we're doing. So all, again, all I'm doing here is uh, kind of finishing off like I've got that roundabout there, but it doesn't really work because we're in the UK. It was in this park is designed to be set in the UK. And if we're driving on the left, that roundabout does not work at all. It's just there to kind of symbolically show where the roundabout would go and help me sort of lay out the basic kind of footprint that the uh, road infrastructure will have. But we will go back next episode and just replot some of it. So that's going to be the crux of next episode, I suppose. So uh, I don't know what I'm doing here. I think I'm just having a pan around, making sure everything works. So yep, lighting. That is something we need to do. So make sure there's lots of lights because this is not a park that's going to be closing at 4 p.m. or something. We're going to be opening well into the early hours. So I want to make sure that everything is sufficiently illuminated to help steer guests and cars alike to the exits without having to need, I don't know, torches or headlights. Uh, I didn't really, I don't think I needed to add that extra bit of information there because you guys know what street lights are for, I suppose. Now he can see me actually adding in case someone gets lost, even with the guidance of attendants and even with kind of the one way system in place, sometimes they might end up missing their parking spot and so they'll need to go the whole way around the car park. So just in case that happens, they don't have to rejoin the main road system to get back into the toll booth area there's that little giveaway section that sort of takes them off the main exit road and into the car park again i don't know how easy that was to understand when the actual uh, giveaway section back into the car park was only there intermittently but that's what that was now finally i'm adding some little zebra crossings here just to get guests from the car park onto the main path into the park itself again it's very claustrophobic and i'm not really sure how in the real world how well these zebra crossings would pan out. I don't know if they would just create too much of a backup of cars with guests constantly crossing. I feel like it makes sense as an onlooker and in Planet Coaster, realistically, it doesn't ever it doesn't ever have any bearing. It doesn't it doesn't really matter. But I like knowing that it's at least somewhat realistic. So I hope it works well, but I don't I don't know. I don't really know. I think it <laughs> I like to. Th I'd like to think this would work well, but it, they may end up causing a little bit too much of a backup in a real life situation, which luckily Velocity Lake is not. So it's nothing I needed to worry about. Now with the actual Belisha beacons themselves, those little orange lights in Neptune Park, they were just that a pole with a little uh, round art piece. We have since had a few more parts added to the game, namely the emergency lights, which you know enables flashing lights. So I just clipped those inside those round orange spheres and had them flash orange so they actually blink orange like real Belisha beacons do. Last but not least, I forgot that the cars in Planet Coaster by default always have their headlights on in the dark, which is not particularly realistic for a car park situation. So I had to very, very, very painstakingly go through every single individual car and turn off the lights. So I'm going to just, you just saw it there, I cross-faded across to uh, me finishing the job because I don't think it's the most engaging thing to watch. So I'm going to end this episode here. We're going to show some lovely little shots of the car park that we have so far. Next episode, we're going to work on the actual toll booths themselves as well as finalize the infrastructure leading up to the car park, kind of the main roads themselves. But, you know, I hope you enjoyed what we have so far. And I hope you saw that on screen there are some links to a playlist on the left for more episodes in Velocity Lake, as well as a video chosen for you by YouTube's recommendation algorithm. There's also a link to subscribe and check out the Patreons on screen. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this installment of Velocity Lake. And I hope you enjoy the rest of your Wednesday.